Hey everyone, Peter here. Hope you all are enjoying 2019. Um, I know I am. This is uh, the cross slide of uh, closing Colchester 15 that I just picked up. And one of the things that I noticed when I was picking it up was that this wheel, this uh, feed, had two full revolutions and they read, I don't know if you can see this, but one revolution is 190 thousandths, or excuse me, yeah, so it'd be 200 a revolution, right? Each graduation, anyway, 200 is 190 right there. All right, so anyway, this thing had like all this slop, and so if you'd move this, you can see the cross slide moving with just you know a little bit of movement, right? So it feels like it has zero or very little right now. The problem was, and I don't know how long they ran it like this, these two screws, these Allen caps that hold the lead nut, those were loose as a goose. And back here, Bear with me one second while I crank this thing out. Okay, I'm going to take you around the corner. Those Allen's right there and that yoke that that lead screw goes in were loose too. So, um, it had slop, slop, and more slop. And then This nut was sloppy as I'll get out on the lead screw for the carriage, so I imagine threading was a little bit nebulous. Um, this half nut lever, uh, this thing will go all the way down, straight down, which I'm sure it's not supposed to do. It will not stay up. In fact, it feels like it can't go where it needs to be. This is the feed lever. This feed lever goes here. It's supposed to engage and stay there, and it doesn't. Uh, I don't know if it's a detent problem, a travel problem, or a combination of both. And then this, I've never seen this before. I've asked a couple of people. Um, I don't have a manual for this thing yet, but anyhow, um, this is like a ton of slop. But apparently this disengages if you pull this out. Why, I don't know, but anyway, it does, and I'm told that it's supposed to do that. How true that is, I can't fathom why, but um, I guess it is. Anyway, this is um, in here. Look, at it. it's just massively sloppy. So apparently, I'm going to have to open this apron up and get in there and um, do, some, do some massaging and replacing and, you know, some things like that. Um... This is not, well, I don't know if this is really bad as it looks or worse, but this aluminum cover used to have the um, functions for what this does when you activate it. And this is the feeds. This selects the carriage feed or the cross slide. This apparently is the direction. When you alter this, it, it changes the direction of the feeds. I don't know why you would hit them with a hammer. Um... But those sure look like hammer marks to me. So uh, I'm, I'm as puzzled as you are. There are some lube points on this. Uh, let me see. Back up here. These look like... These look like luber spots. And that one not. That's an Allen, but... I don't know why that what that is. That could be a lubrication port. This is definitely a lubrication port. Um, but this has a lubrication pump on it. I say pump. Um, has this thumb operated deal here. So I don't know where it picks its oil up. I'm assuming it's here. But, um, I don't know. We'll take it, take it apart and see what's there. So that's about it for this so far. I'm pretty happy about it. It has 
hardened ways. I haven't inspected them, but they're not all smashed up. Um, so that's a good sign. But something else, here, let's take a walk over here. And we'll, something else that I did this week, I meant to make a video exclusively about it, but didn't get around to it. Now everyone knows how that works. At any rate, um, there's a wicked leaky gland on the dipper that I say dipper. It's uh, this is a backhoe, my 580 case. Um, so I put this in position to uh, pull this out, and uh, anyway, I made it as far as getting this in position. And what was happening? Uh, the um, these controls. Um, get in here. You see, you can notice that there's some new pins, and there's these rods and controls. And anyway, this runs the backhoe and everything. I ended up having to take this all apart. Take all these um, pivot pins out out of the yokes and uh, run a drill through everything and clear it out because they had swollen up with rust um, and the pins were galled in and froze up. So instead of pivoting, it was bending the rods. So it made control a little bit nebulous to say the least. Um, so that's about where we are in this and I had to do some stuff on a on my welder, my portable welder that I didn't uh didn't have a lot of success with it. It um let me see. Anyway, um if you fire it up this machine since it was almost new and taken very good care of it and it started doing this out of the clear blue sky a little bit back I was doing some stick welding with it so in the past when it did anything weird like that it needed a set of points well it would need maybe an adjustment on the points or a set of points and and that was you know like five years eight years before you needed to put points in a condenser and well so I did that but I hadn't put points in it that long ago so <clears throat> that didn't fix it the plugs are coming out sooty like it's you know has an ignition problem so I put a set of wires, the wires that were on it, I couldn't get any continuity through the spark plug caps through the wire conductor, and they were solid core wires. That didn't help it. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, there's only so many things here. It's a battery ignition. There's the battery, the on-off switch, points in the condenser, the ignition coil, and the wires. I mean, that's it. That's the system. So... I put, like as I said, I put points condenser in it, replaced the wires with brand new spark plug caps and good ones that I've had no problem with ever. I put them in hundreds of applications without a problem. 
that didn't help it. So today, even though I couldn't find any real measurable issue with the coil, it's always possible with electric components, they don't work when they're in service. They may measure fine and appear to be fine and blah, 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 but when you actually put them into service, and this applies to brand new parts, um, they're not gonna work for whatever reason. Well, this is the exact same issue before I changed any parts. So brand new coil, zero change. I can't see how the carburetor could have that much wrong with it that it would consistently backfire out the exhaust like that. By the way, I, I failed to mention I had checked the valve clearance on the intakes and the exhaust valves for both cylinders and they're exactly where they need to be. A leak down test for both cylinders. The valves are sealed up. The rings are leaking about 18 to 20 percent. Um, that's not perfect, but for an engine with a whole mess of hours on it, and I don't have an hour meter on this, by the way, it, no hour meter. Um, it doesn't smoke, as you just saw, it doesn't smoke. An engine that had a real compression problem, which by the way, on a compression test, it's 110 pounds in each cylinder, the up and down, or the high and low uh, Onan spec for this is 100 to 120 pounds. This has 110 in each cylinder. With it, well, 110 within the width of the line of the needle, so basically 110 for all intent and purpose. And I'm completely baffled. I have a brand new carburetor. I suppose I could try that and I can't fathom what would make it do what it's doing purely from carburetor, but it's possible. I'm not ruling anything out. So if anyone watching this video has ever experienced this with an Onian engine or anything similar with an engine of similar construction or sim similar design, uh, please comment. Let me know what you know. Uh, I'm always learning new stuff. I mean, this is baffling. Oh, by the way, the battery is new. Cables are new. I mean, I take really good care of this thing. This is this is really baffling to me, just completely. And I'm sure, as you heard, it it sounds good when it's idling or it's up on the governor finally. But in between that popping and banging, I'm baffled. So thanks for watching. Those of you that subscribe, thank you very much. Those of you watching this, please subscribe. I am going to try my best to uh, put more content up. Um, not that I'm whining or looking for sympathy, but I don't know if you can see those. Those aren't as bad as they look. What those are is that's where they put the needles in my arm uh, for my dialysis. Yes, I'm a kidney patient. I'm going on my fifth year. I can't complain. There's plenty of people that are worse off than I am. So, no worries, folks. Have a great 2019 if you never watch another one of my videos. And if you are a regular, please come back. I am going to try my best to get more content that interests you.